Greetings fellow Void Slayers, Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Rimworld Anomaly Eldritch Guards, Episode 93, Intensified Darkness. As you can see above my head, our only priority right now, more or less, is to continue destroying the Void. Uh, there's a few things I want to do um, before I go after the second Void structure that is on our map tile, and that is to A, make sure to heal up, because not everyone's fully healed. B, uh, interestingly enough, make an aesthetic nose for our dear uh, high-ranking royal. Not our leader anymore, our ex-leader, but our high-ranking royal, because he had a shattered nose um, last fight. And we can replace that, uh, because he is our trade person, and having a shattered nose is a bit of a problem as a result. And then also to uh, improve our relationships with our allies so that we can rely on them for military aid if and when we need them. So, with that in mind, I am going to queue up some of the nicer courses to be sent to one and some of the other courses to be sent to the other. Uh, actually, I'll load one pod first. So we have the second void structure here guarded lightly, I would say. The metal horrors that guard these structures have already mostly been taken care of. Um, I forgot to mention that last stream we also tried to activate the Diabolises in order to uh, help destroy some of the void entities, and it honestly backfired as the Diabolises decided just to punch holes in our own walls and cause issues. Uh, there was one other thing I wanted to do, which was to get, uh, or rather, to make sure that we have no dark spots behind our walls. So I see some dark spots in our defenses, and it would definitely benefit us to brighten the map up a bit. I did have a colonist with a mutated lung. Let's do a quick health check. So ink's good. Devil Eyes is a scar, but we're not about to put him through a bio-regen cycle. Uh, Cpana has a Shattered Nose. The, uh, the Lung got replaced. That was Swanky. And now he has a Detox Lung. As does... Actually, the last Lung was Skyra and has a Detox Lung. So everyone else is good. Other than uh, C Panda's missing nose, for the most part. Alright, so here is the gift basket. And we're just sending them out to our friends and allies in order to prove, improve relationships. So we're essentially giving away all of our corsets. We have a lot of silver, so I don't really need to worry about, like, trade good silver. Because we have, like, 10k silver. That's plenty. Uh, so the corsets are just gifts to improve our relationship to make sure that we can call upon them if we need. So I'm improving the relationship with White Dominion and improving the relationship with Orler uh, because I'm not too worried about the League of Zoxo. Uh, tribals aren't going to be all that helpful as they can't be called for allies. And Mekis is working the nose for Sea Panda. Good. Looks like the steel to add some illumination has been hauled, but it hasn't actually been built yet. I'd also love to be able to deactivate this Twisted Obelisk, but it just has been very stubborn in that we haven't had the chance to yet. But things are looking pretty good. Second gift basket will go out in just a minute. There it is. And now Orler will like us a little bit more. 77, that's perfect. Mikas is almost done with the nose. And I was planning on... Um, maybe installing it... After the next fight. So activating this... And then defending against its waves and then after doing both of those things 
uh, once we have downtime and recovery time, having Sea Panda uh, receive that nose implant. So it looks to me like we are just about ready to go. I'm going to have uh, Featherfall hang out by the... Actually, I'm going to have Mikus, because Mikus is the mech controller. Hang out by the mechs here. And then everyone else other than Mikus is going to convene up here to the north. I'm uh, heading to this void structure in order to activate it now. It's uh, 6 in the morning. I figure now is a pretty good time. We've also added in the lights so they won't have any dark spots in the base. So this is illuminated and this is illuminated. As the starting of the Awakening of the Void did warn us, uh, make sure that you protect yourself against darkness and don't rely upon solar panels. Um, and both of those things I'm taking to heart. So the Gorehawks here are most susceptible to brawlers. I don't really want to get needled, so I'm going to send the brawlers in first. Yeah, the, the pop-up at uh, Unnatural Darkness is a huge clue, exactly. And, uh... And it's not spoiling anything, because the game warns you not to rely on solar pa panels and to make sure that you're not in the dark. It's very clear about that. Which is why I can tell you guys and not feel like I'm spoiling anything. Because the game already does that for you. I'm actually, if anything, kind of surprised that the game offers you that kind of information. But it's probably, they probably playtested it and realized it was way too frustrating not to know those kind of things were coming. So that they, um, they added warnings for it as a result. And I, I can get behind that. Because the sort, sort of like, gotcha type attacks can get really uh, exhausting. Alright, so there's one Gorehawk that we didn't actually kill. And I'll have Ink, our dear leader, be the one to activate this, but let me quickly patch up all of the brawlers who just got bruised, I'm assuming. Yeah, it's only bruises. Uh, how about Skyra? You patch them up. The Sea Panda can activate. So Sea Panda is the most um, psychically attuned. So for role-playing reasons, sending Sea Panda to activate makes sense to me. Megus, let's have you switch out to the Molotov Cocktails and prepare the Northern Fire Maze for Northern Fire. So I'm going to remove this from behind the walls and I'm going to remove this from the home zone. And he's ready to set some fires. All right, Mikus is standing at the ready. The door is no longer uh, suffering from dementia, which is nice. And there we go. I'm going to be entering the base this way. And everyone's going to go that way. So we're falling back into the base. Having activated the second void structure that's on our map tile, and we have a warning. As the second structure is activated, the darkness begins to intensify, and unnatural darkness will soon descend. Make sure your colony is prepared, stockpile resources, build lights, craft disruptor flares, and reinforce defenses. Only those in light will be safe. So we already have had the... Um, the Noctiliths on Unnatural Darkness before, so we know exactly what to expect. If you're in the darkness, you will be um, attacked. Alright, so taking a look, we have Gorehawks, Devourers, Devourers, Gorehawks. 
Gorehawks. Devourers, Gorehawks. A lot of Gorehawks and Devourers. So let's, uh, let's get this Fire Maze cooking. Wow, because you missed it, like, point blank. Embarrassing. Oops, sorry, air dog. All right, so shooters. I'm actually going to have you enter the base. Hmm. I sort of wish I had a door closer for quicker access, because they have to run all the way down here and then back up. I guess that's okay. Could be worse. But the Devourers are going to be really dangerous. They're hard to counter. So getting as much fire on as possible is going to be our best strategy. And I think I'm going to keep Dedora out of this fight. And in fact, I'm going to say Dedora stay in the mountain base because Dedora still has dementia. And uh, because of the dementia, there's a running a risk of Dedora having a mental break and going somewhere they shouldn't. Also, all of the mechs go to the mountain base because you're small and uh, therefore edible. And it would be bad for you to be eaten. And I'm going to put Soul Blader here so that I can slow down these devourers by... Um, by releasing urchins. Ensuring that the devourers take more fire damage. Alright. Looking good. So we have all of the swarm coming in. Uh, Mikas is going to switch back to the SMGs. And then I'm going to have the brawlers here. And the shooters here behind the orange line. These urchins are going the wrong way. I sort of figured that might be the case. Okay, they turned around. Sweet. So the urchins are really just being released to slow down the devourers. And then we're forming a line uh, to be able to shoot where we are outside of the devourers' jump range. So again, uh, the devourers can jump 10 tiles. So actually, this orange line is safe to stand on. But we're going to have to be ready to fight Devourers. There we go. So the way this is designed is Devourers can only swallow something um, of certain sizes. So if if you're 3.5 or larger, which is the case with Zaleb, Soulblader, and Kish, uh, you can't be Devoured. So I have the Devourer wall here. That's essentially what they are. Just a wall of anti-Devourers. Now, the other concern is these Gorehawks are not attacking the correct area. I hope they do turn around, or I'm going to have to counter them some other half. Forbid the doors? Nah, urchins don't um, listen to door forbidding or anything. They don't, they don't, they're not, they're completely uncontrollable. So Zleb's getting shot a lot by friendly fire. So he's going to need uh, quite the patch once this fight's over. So I'm going to have Zleb back up. Kish, I'm going to have uh, in the front and center uh, because Kish has a built-in shield. But yeah, we did more damage to Zleb than the enemies did by a long shot. The Gorehawks did turn around. Good. And in 1.7 days, we have new void uh, structures arriving. Here comes a large wave of devourers. And once they get really close, I'm going to release urchins. There we go. So 
So what's going to end up happening here is the devourers that jump on the urchins then get closer to my dudes. So I have to be careful about um about that because as they get closer, they will be able to then hop again and close the gap, the the distance gap. So I'm telling my shooters to single out the devourers that um got through. Also, we lost a wall here, I think. Oh no, it's still there. It just looked like it had broken. Jojo Kim, thank you for resub. And Stratastic, too. Alright, releasing more origins. I'm gonna have Zaleb back off a little bit. Zaleb's looking pretty worse for wear. Don't do that attack. So these guys, uh, they are jumping to me now. So I'm gonna back up a little bit. I think Ink's about to get swallowed, but it should be pretty quick to cut him out. So this is the double hops that I was referring to. Um, so let's go ahead and have everyone just focus, focus, focus. Alright, so double eyes is out. Ink is out. Feather Fall is out. Alright. Um, at this point, here, let me clear all these messages. I'm gonna have my brawler stand here and my shooter stand behind. We'll be a little bit less accurate shooting more of our own mechs. But I think that is the last of the Devourers coming out. I think the Devourer wave is done. Meaning, uh... Anyone that is wounded... ...is gonna be... ...uh, subsequently dismissed. So I'm gonna clear the home zone. Because I don't really care about the fires. Mikus will start repairing the robots. Sea Panda is going to go ahead and for the surgery. And then I have uh, about a half half of my soldiers still here ready to help defend. But yeah, I think the uh, the Arbor Wave has been dealt with. Uh, the Plasteel Walls will get repaired eventually. Uh, Fraggles, you're... Uh, no, uh, Swanky's a good... Uh, no. Who's a good constructor here? Red. Okay, Red and Skyra. All right, repairing them up now. And then for the mechs that are doing okay, I want them to recharge actively. Because as they get repaired, their power levels will drop. And I am destroying my own origins because I don't really need them. Uh, I don't really need them wiggling about for the next few hours. Once this fire dies down, oh, actually, Skyrim, I'm gonna borrow you a minute. I'd like to finish off the, um, the enemies here. But I want Skyra to flip-flop the doors. So that the southern, um, pathway is the valid path. Stand there. There we go. Some of the war origins are just kept going. That's fine. Drea, I don't believe you're allowed in there. Oh, 
All right. Yeah, so here's the last wave of war engines just kind of automatically seeking and destroying. Totally fine. I can't tell them not to anyway. So once the ambient temperature in here um, becomes tolerable, I'll add that back to the behind the wall zone, and then I'll uh, put the flooring back and remove all the corpses and all that stuff. So Soul Blader is now 100% repaired. Does need to be resupplied with steel, however. Zleb's gonna be a bit longer of a repair job. Definitely shot the hell out of Zleb ourselves. It's one of those, like, can't be helped. All right, Sea Panda's going under the knife from Daydora. Daydora, what's your surgery success chance? 88? Uh, I don't like the odds, but um, they're okay. Could be worse. Yeah, I think the surgery went fine. So now Sea Panda's a little bit more attractive and doesn't have that uh, disfigured face. The ambient temperature is dropping, and we have about a day and a half to be able to prep for the next void attacks. How have I prevented babies? Just chance. I'm not actually doing anything to prevent babies, it's just complete luck that I haven't gotten a bunch of babies. Oh, Skyra, you are not zoned correctly. My bad. Luckily, I have plenty of uh, chem fuel to be able to have you jump to freedom. All right, the temperature in there is fine. So behind the walls, I will not include the southern maze so that we don't go into the southern maze, but I'll include the northern maze so that we can reset it. And then also, Max, you're free to move about again. Definitely glad that was an octal and not a devourer. Uh, so, devourers don't wander around during this stage of the fight. As you can see, it's just noctals and gore hulks uh, for the most part. I guess there's a few shamblers over here, but they're just there because they got finished off. Or they didn't get finished off, rather. So you're never going to have, like, devourers, like Chimera, or or uh, certain entities like that, like, hang out and around and and be ready to gank you. All right, I want Zleb to recharge because he's the lowest on power. While the other dormant charge. Good. Things are looking good. Oh, sorry, Skyra. Should have let you go free. Yeah, things are looking pretty good. When is the darkness coming? Uh, well, we have 1.2 days until the void structures, new void structures arrive. So, let's assume it's when the void structures arrive. I think that's a pretty safe assumption. The other thing I might want to do is we have been hauling the uh, devourers to the butchery. But um, I'm going to stop making chem fuel from organics because I don't think that's uh, a good use of our time. We have 3,150 chem fuel. I think that will be plenty. Another question I had for you guys is, should I fix Daydora? So I made a little bit of an error. It was the scar list that removes conditions. 
Nonsenescence prevents you from getting them in the first place. So her genes will stop her from ever becoming frail or have a bad back or dementia, but it won't cure it. So one of the, the way I could fix Daedora would be to actually kill her, behead her, removing her brain and then resurrect her again so that she loses her dementia. It would use up my last res serum, um, but if you think it's worth it, I'll do it. If you don't think it's worth it, then, you know, I can save that red serum. I'm, I'm fine either way. Can you resurrect a Deathless? Yeah, so Deathless, um... Deathless is not, like, Deathless so much as it is... It stops them from, like, ever bleeding out to death. It doesn't actually mean you're, like, immortal or anything. Uh, so I'll, I'll look at the genes so that you're, you understand it a little bit better. Carriers of this gene have archites in the blood, which sustain their life process no matter what. As long as the brain remains intact, a carrier of this gene will never die. So what I'm saying is, if we, like, euthanize by cut and cut off and, like, extract the head, we could fix Daedora, but it's pretty gory and our, like, ideology doesn't like doing that. So maybe it's not worth it. We don't use death refusal. We're not cultists. Death refusal would work if we were cultists, but we're not. How's our power doing? We are way overpowered. Perfect. The solar panels are obviously not absorbing any power. So having tons of excess power now is a pretty good indicator that we'll be fine. So Zaleb's at 71, Kish is at 80, and Soul Blader's at 73. That's definitely going to be enough to fight some additional horrors. Good, good, good. Alright, you guys think, do not fix Daedora. I'm totally okay with that. There's other solutions, of course, for Daedora. Oh, I meant to get rid of this flush mass nucleus. Uh, Ink, could you? I'm gonna have to destroy the platform first, just because I targeted it wrong. There we go. Now that flush mass nucleus is uh, gone, and its threat to us is neutralized. I don't like, so my two cents, I don't really like having to contain entities during the the boss fights, the end fights, because the entities could try to escape and cause a lot more difficulty, and it's just unnecessary, because I have plenty of Biopharite, uh, so I, I really don't need to keep them for no reason. And we're going to go with no. We're going to leave Daedora alone. So the other solution for Daedora, of course, would be to get hooked on Luciferium. Um, or Heal Serum, if we had Heal Serum. So there's a bunch of other solutions, but we won't seek them. Alright. Void Structure is arriving in seven hours, and I think... It would be a good opportunity soon to give a leader speech as yet another potential boon to people's moods. I mean, everyone's moods up here are almost 100%. Like, everyone's quite happy. But the happier, the better, I think. Build an exit to the north. Uh, the reason why I don't want an exit to the north is it will possibly come under fire and become a weak point. So it's convenient for me, but it's also convenient for the enemies, and I'd rather have it be inconvenient for both. That makes sense. Because I always have, like, jetpacks and things like that to be able to cover the gap. Whereas, like, the entities don't have jetpacks to be able to shortcut in the way that I can. So it's more of a pain for them than it is for me. Uh, yeah, and the war engines could absolutely go the wrong way, too. True. So, I am giving a leader speech. Ink is trying to motivate everyone. With the darkness on the way. 
Darkness is almost here. Only those in direct light from lamps, torches, or flares will be safe. Challenge accepted. And unnatural darkness has descended upon the colony. Uh, let's turn on this light so this gets illuminated too. And the speech was encouraging. Uh, void structures have come. So we have three more void structures. Three more, basically, noctoliths, more or less, with their own metal horrors. Uh, another follow-up question for you guys. Should I use my anti-grain warheads against the metal horrors of the three new structures? So I have three anti-grain warheads, and there are three void structures do you think it would be a good use to use the anti-grain warheads to nuke the metal horrors, not all three at once, one at a time, to be able to clear out the void structures and trigger uh, new waves of attack? Is that a good strategy? Using our, like, god weapons in that way? And it very much, to me, looks like the yays are winning this... So I'm going to remove an anti-green warhead and man this mortar. Uh, okay, who's trying to... Guitar Lillian is trying to... There we go. Hold fire. Most unanimous you've ever seen? Alright, we're, we're going to nuke it. Uh, let's see. I would like to get ready for what is to come. So I'm going to send everyone up to ready the defense. I'm going to have red. So so the other issue here is C-Pan is going to need to probably drop um, solar pinholes along this hallway so that we can set fire to the fire traps without having to be absolutely decimated by the void creatures. But that's totally fine. I mean, that's not a problem at all. All right. I do have... Um, I do have uh, set hold fire on right now because I'd like to get this area prepared before. There we go. If I destroy this door, it won't be a uh, light blocker. One fewer door is fine because then I can keep the granite door closed. All right. Red. Want to set some fires? So red's ready. Our defenses are more or less ready. Uh, in this case, I think... I'm going to create another zone called Mech Recharge. And Mech Recharge is going to have the mechs hang out down here. Um, because I, I don't want... I want them out of the way. I don't want to necessarily involve them unless it's necessary. Uh, you know, you guys can keep charging yourselves up, though. There we go. All right, time for nuking. Mikus, you are free to fire. Shots out. And Mikus is going to go join the defenders. Oh, sorry, rat. So obviously some of them survived, but the ones that survived are pretty destroyed. Um, actually, I am going to fight these metal horrors without the fire. 
because I want to save the fire trap for the void structure and not for the metal horrors because the metal horror horrors are aren't enough of a threat to warrant uh, uh, to warrant the full might of the fire trap. Was it worth it? I think so. It was it was very satisfying. Oh, Joe bro, you no no bro. You just opened a shortcut door. All right, let me uh fix the behind the walls zoning. There we go. Here comes the horrors. Like I said, not much of a threat, which is why I didn't want to bother using the whole fire trap. Certainly not necessary. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Inks like, I got this one. <laughs> the wump. Okay, I think that's it. Sea Panda, repair the walls. Actually, not Sea Panda. Uh, Red, repair the walls. Because everyone else is going to be moving out to activate the next um, structure. Although I wouldn't mind uh, hauling away this stuff. So I'll add it to the allowable zone. Thank you for tuning in to RimWorld Anomaly Eldritch Guards, which originally streamed live on Twitch August 11th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming stream. If you would like to join my online gaming community on Discord, Rodamont.com has a link to it, as does the description of this video. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel and made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. I hope to catch you next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow guardsmen.